Yeah, I don't know whether it's, it's, you know, whether it's a good idea to do like a single launch and then do an EP launch after that, or do an EP launch and then do a couple single launches before you do the next EP, so I don't know. I think that it's not going to be the end of the world with pictures, right. you know, you don't know from it. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Take a step. <laughs> it's really <laughs> fast for them. Hi. Um, just had an idea about the, the fans when we're talking about getting more fans. Um, like networking with other musicians and not hijacking is the wrong word, I want a better word, but kind of, um, yeah, hijacking their fans too, but in a mutual way. So if they're supporting you or you think, you know, you remember how famous Dido was before she featured on Eminem's album? And you can do that locally on a local scale and, um, you know, support bands around the town, then you go and get with them and they get their fans support you and you know like network when I don't think musicians are in competition with each other because everyone is unique they've got their own voice their own story their own message um, so yeah so like help each other support each other and network yeah that's that's excellent absolutely um, and on a I mean just as a kind of a higher scale example of that exact thing um, there was a, a campaign recently well in the last few years I should say where uh, Interpol and Pixies played a show together, I think it was in Mexico City or somewhere like that. And preceding the show, each of them sent out an email to their list promoting the other one's music. And it, it basically um, gave them the opportunity to share their lists. It gave each, everyone on the Interpol list was given the opportunity through the means of downloading some tracks of, of getting onto the Pixies list. So I mean, that's kind of a, it's the same thing really, but on a, on a, a slightly different scale. So definitely use your peers or work with your peers. Be great. We've got any more? I've got a few, a few more. I don't know. Yeah, I think I've got a few. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep track of time. Watch the time. I've been in the industry now 26 odd years, and what I'm finding here today is, is okay, he's valid and he's good. What's strange is that everybody seems to be looking about image. It's, it should be about the substance of your material, whatever you're working on. And you will know, I mean, okay, now most people don't do album launches because they're all pushed by labels to put out one track or an EP because obviously labels are not financing it. But whatever works for yourself, you will know. If you've got an album's worth of material, put out an EP, put out a single track. Keep that relationship with your Fans, if you can think of you as a shop window, there must always be more in the shop than is in the window. It's as simple as that. I would totally agree. We just say experiment, see what works for yourself. There's no global solution. Whatever you might do might not be good for your general because somebody else is doing it. Just experiment. Simple. Especially if you're not big artists with 20,000 Facebook fans, let's say, or 5,000 people on the mailing list. You can experiment. Nobody's going to tell you not to do it. Nobody's going to tell you, oh, why have you done this? Simple. Questions? Okay, I'm just going to put a few more slides and then we can take any more questions and then I'll be done. Um, so, keeping fans engaged, there's some amazing ideas. Thank you, everybody who's contributed. It's really cool. Um, I think, just in terms of the, the pre sale itself, just to bring it back to Kind of the topic that I've been um, going through. Basically, everything we've talked about it would, would also be applicable to, to marketing and pre sale. How might you do that? Uh, I guess one idea that I had um, was to take a cue from the crowdfunders. So we've got Kickstarter, uh, Pledge Music, Indiegogo, I think there's a, there's a few other options. Um, what really impresses me with the, the crowdfunding platforms is that these guys will take a, a, a campaign, if you call it a campaign, uh, and they make it into an event, and it's something that everyone is welcome to participate in. I think that really works for them. So this is a, a Slash campaign. Um, I took a screenshot of it a couple of days ago. I wouldn't be surprised if it's reached its target by now. Um, the basic pledge uh, up in the top right there is a, is a $10. So it's like a $10 entry point. Uh, and then there's a, there's a whole series of packages down the right-hand side, um, which maxes out at $159, although I'm sure there's ways of putting more should you wish to. Um, in the center here, we have a series of updates on the pledge page. Now, these are only, uh, you can only click through these if you have made that basic pledge of $10. So, 
So what this means is that uh, in creating this campaign and making these kind of locked, I suppose, or gated updates, they've created a sort of an exclusive event. Um, and once you're through the game, once you pay that $10, you, you really are going to get a lot of interaction. You feel like you're supporting something that means something. And that's a really good feeling to capitalise on with your fans. Um, I guess what I would want to learn from this is that it's another way of creating opportunities to talk about your upcoming album. These guys, are, they've got a lot of updates, there's a hell of a lot going on. They've got photographs, they've got video messaging. This kind of stuff you can uh, deliver via a platform like Ledger or Kickstarter. Um, but you can also deliver these by email. So, uh, when I used to work at Topspin, we had a saying which was snowballs, not avalanches. Uh, and the idea with that is that you want to plan a timeline of events uh, and, and updates, things that you're going to drip feed to your network. Um, some of these are going to be more appropriate for social networks, some of them are going to work well for your mailing list. Uh, but it's, it's good to your fans to get used to hearing from you in, in various ways with the, the drip feed approach rather than just dumping an avalanche of information on them all once and then kind of disappearing again. So some ideas about how you might um, engage with your fans during the pre-sale. Uh, you might thank the purchasers, thank the fans who've bought from you, um, ideally to uh, stimulate them to share their action with their networks um, or maybe even to upgrade their purchase. Uh, you can send out some bonus exclusives, so there might be some demo versions or some tracks that people didn't know they were going to get. It's also going to be a pretty exciting event that's something people will likely to share. Um, and you can message your fans who haven't purchased yet from you um, carefully and work a little harder at giving them a reason to buy from you. Okay, so that brings me to the conclusion. Um, we've looked at what is direct fan, we have touched on an album launch timeline, gone through in some detail a uh, best practice data capture process, looked at an album pre-sale structure, and we've had a great discussion on keeping fans engaged. Thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you, Barbican. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, I'm Jesse. If there's any more questions, now's the time. Or you can just clap. Do we have any more questions or are we totally know them all? Anybody who's curious? Still curious? So either they got nothing or you're too good. <laughs> too good. Okay, so um, you're busy making music and now you've got to be an online marketer, a web developer, a videographer, a photographer and everything else. When do you get time to actually make music? This is definitely a thing. This is a thing that's emerging, and I understand that. But I think that this is the, the highest level of ideal that you want to aim for. You don't have to emulate every step of this. You're going to find what works for you. You can strip it back to the bare elements until you reach a point where you're able to work with a friend, take on a manager, a label, if you wish to do that. You can't, you can't get there if you don't do this. But I think that you can. I think that you can get there, you just have to be selective. You don't need to go all out, go completely like you, you need to tick all those boxes. There's some boxes that are, that are more important than others. And that is like being able to be found online, and once people do find you, giving them a way to connect with you so that you can actually follow up with them again. I mean, that's key. You don't need to worry too much about all this stuff all at once. Those are the key takeaways, I guess. Be online. If you want to be found, not everyone wants to be found, if you want to be found, be findable, much as you can, and, and give fans an easy way to connect with you, and, and make it so that you can find them again. That's the main reason you have a mailing list. You can actually reach out to those people again. Okay. Um, just a response to that, and a few other people. Um, I've an artist I've been working with because I'm coming from the producer side and the artist side, but he what he's done is he's got a team of people together, and he's done that with basically hardly any money. Um, and what he's used is used leverage. So, for example, he's found this photographer, this Italian photographer. And if you need to find people who are willing to work and who are amazing, there's so many Italians in this country and realise who are like into media and, and photography and stuff. But he's found this photographer, and so he's used leverage. So the difference between leverage and like delegation is instead of saying, look, do all my photos for me and whatever else he's done, okay, he's got about 15,000 followers on his Facebook, so, um, which he's just like, over a couple of years of promoting himself. But he said, look, you know, I'll promote all your, all your photos on my website if you come and do some photos for me. So then he's then, they're kind of getting that share that way, and then he's saying he's a video photo doing the same thing. 
So I think that's the best thing that he's found, is just finding other people. So you don't have to be a web developer, you don't have to know this. Find someone who wants to do this, who's a fan of your music, you'll go, yep, okay, let's, let's help each other out. That's yeah, that's excellent. Just give business. I think Tommy's an advocate of that as well. Or just give business to somebody. Pay a little money. Not everything is for free in this world, so... Hey, um, yeah, I mean, I sympathize with the idea that you can't spend all your time doing music, you know, uh, you, you have to do the marketing, I mean, I have a day job, you know, <laughs> I have to do that as well, but, um, you know, I, I try to take a, a bigger perspective, you know, for hundreds of years, well, for thousands of years, people made music uh, besides hunting and gathering, and then we had a period of uh, patronage, I think it's called, you know, where, a rich king uh, or a religious person would fund your art. And then we had a situation from for about a hundred years where you could sell music on pieces of plastic. And that was great, but you know, it's 2013 now and, and it's changed, you know. Uh, and you know, this this opportunity it's it's different. It's not the same as, as 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, it sucks you uh, you have to do a bit more in the beginning, but this immense opportunity now, you know. People couldn't sit at home and record music and put it out for everyone around the world to listen for free. That's amazing. You know, it's just it's different, and uh, you know, it's, 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 there's, there's new challenges, but there's new opportunities. That's the way I see it. Cool. Thank you. Totally agree. We have somebody else. Like, I, the only thing I want to touch on is like I think it, we've kind of forgotten all these cool tools. We're in the music industry. We're trading in, trading in songs. So whatever's going on, you need to be writing. If your songs suck, no one's going to get engaged. And that's the bottom line. We're, we're trading in songs, that's our currency. So if your songs suck, no one's going to get engaged. So just keep writing whatever. Yeah, that's... No, definitely. That's, that's brilliant advice. I guess my, my assumption was that it writes music with the brain to start with. I'm sure you know. Anyone else? Or are we... Take a break, Tommy? Do you have any questions? Questions? Right. Yep. Okay, so this is going to be the last one, so we'll take a break for the next talk. And after you, it's going to be a wave of applause. <laughs> um, so, with becoming uh, independent and um, taking on all these aspects of, of promotion and everything yourself, and you're, you're, so we're, we're talking about not um, being involved with uh, the support and protocol of label anymore. So, not necessarily, this, this can exist for the label. Um, do, I mean, is, is there any point in, in pursuing that, that old way of doing things? I mean, oh, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it really depends on preference. Um, I mean, labels have got a lot of promotion, you can rely on them to do a lot of promotion for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's um, you know, radio bloggers and booking agents and yeah, I think that if you want to if you want to look at the, the marketer or the direct to fan marketer or the digital marketer, this is it's basically it's it's kind of a new role in the team. So ideally, in the perfect world, you're going to be the artist and have 100 percent of your time available for making your music better and just working on that. And you're going to have the people who handle these things for you. Um, and a lot of the time, if you have a label, that'll that'll be that team. Um, I guess when you're not yet at the level where you have that perfect world, which you know is a hell of a lot of us, um, then we need to find ways of, of substituting. I've lost my thread. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, well, I mean, because there are things, things missing from yourself, and maybe I'm just not grasping yet, but um, like, like you know, things like um, having to acquire a wiki engine and a project like Now, this has never been to replace any of that. Having direct fan strategy is not about replacing a booking agent or you know having a label you're managing. You still need to have all those things. This is just it's based, it's an emerging channel. Like I said at the start, it's not new, but the tools are now within anyone's grasp, so it's much more accessible. Uh, you have the opportunity to have that direct relationship with your fans. That's never meant to replace uh, any of those traditional roles, usually, hopefully, maybe. You're still going to need a booking agent. Yeah. Though, I don't understand that. <laughs> Is that cool? Um, yeah, briefly. Just quickly, in regards, there's always someone 
there's always an A&R or someone looking to listen to your music within labels. So as the gentleman said before, depending on how good your music is, if it's good or it's at a good level, it's always going to get to someone in a label and it's always going to spread. That's, that's what I believe. If, 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 it's a good, if it's good music, it's going to spread. It's, it's going to go out there. And you'll the you'll be taken care of. All right. <laughs> right, so, yeah, cheers for that. I think we're good enough to have a little break and go to the next topic. I hope you enjoyed so far. This is Jessie Spuller. You can, you can find her at We Steve Works. Um, I will put everything on the website, the video of what you just experienced, the questions, the, the presentation, contact, everything else. So if you want to reach out to Jessie for something specific, it can be done either tonight or you know later on the website. Um, something I'd like to say is that tomorrow I'm going to send you all an email because we got kind of sponsored by Topspin and they give away a few accounts, free accounts, yearly accounts and normally they cost $500 but they will give away a few of them for free. So I will send you some questions, it's going to be a little survey. I want to collect your opinions, what you believe about things because I don't want to give it away to everybody that will just grab a free code and never use it. I want people that will actually make something happen with this. So this is about tomorrow, or if I'm not dead, but more the day after. So, all right, I think we'll take a little break and 